Somebody give me the definition of a limit point. What's a limit point? Or right, turn to your neighbor and tell them what a limit point is. Make friends with Faye. Hi. <laughs> Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So, who wants to tell me? Other than Edward, who wants to tell me what a, what a um, what a limit point is? Um, how about you, Andre? Um, just a point that. Uh, a limit point of a set, right? So you have some set E, it exists in some metric space, right? And, and we say that um, uh, P is a limit point of E if something happens, right? If something happens. Anybody? Uh, do you want to you keep on trying on it? Uh, Ruchi? Right. So if every punctured if every punctured neighborhood neighborhood of P intersects uh, intersects E. Right. In other words, uh, given any given any radius given any radius, the punctured neighborhood of P intersect E is non-empty, right? The punctured neighborhood of P, that is the neighborhood, but not including P itself, uh, intersects E in a non-trivial way, right? In other words, there's no matter, so this is P, and what we're saying is that no matter what tiny neighborhood you take, there's always somebody else in it who lives in E, right? There's always some somebody from E in, in, in your neighborhood. Right. No matter you know. So I took that. I took that neighborhood. I take another neighborhood. Well, there's going to be somebody from E in that neighborhood. Right. I take an even smaller neighborhood. There's somebody from E in that neighborhood. I cannot get rid of. I cannot you know. Um, I cannot avoid these E guys. They're they're infinitely close to me. Okay. Yes, Helen. So if they were on the border, it's still a limit point, right? Uh. Well, being on the border. Means you're not you're not in this neighborhood, oh, okay. right? The neighborhood is an open is an open. Uh, remember what the neighborhood means, right? Neighborhood uh, means the set of points in your space where the distance is less than, right? The distance is less than r. Okay, so um, I have to draw it inside inside this. I'm not on the border. Right? Oh, so p has to be in e for it to be a point. No. No, P doesn't have to be an E. P just has to have this property that um, no matter what neighborhood you look in, there's always somebody from E in that neighborhood. Let me, let's do an example to make this clear. Suppose I, I'm in R, so X is R with the standard metric, the standard Euclidean metric, and uh, E is the set of points, 1 over N, where N is any natural number. Okay? So um, that is, here is 0, 1. Uh, e is the set of points 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1, right? 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, and so on and so forth. Okay. All those guys are called, are called, this is the set E. What is the set of, who, what, where are the limit points of E? What are limit points of E? Right. So you've probably seen this notation. E prime, the set of limit points. Uh, what's E prime in this case? Zero. What's E prime? Don't blurt it up. Don't blurt it up. What's E prime in this case? Turn to your neighbor and talk to them for 20 seconds, have an abbreviated conversation. Yeah. <laughs>
because it's okay. 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 Zero, right? Zero is the only limit point, right? And you see that. Well, look, um, if I if if I look at the if I look at the point zero and I take any punctured neighborhood, so I take any interval, but not including zero itself, right? No matter how small my radius, uh, I'm still going to include somebody in E. In fact, I'll include infinitely many points in E, right? So this is an answer to your question, Helen, right? This zero is not in E. Right? But it is a limit point of E. Well, then why can't like one half be a limit point of E? Because every function is a limit also in Okay, so let's look at one half and we say, okay, um, is it true that every neighborhood of one half intersects E in a point differing from one half? So let's say, okay, well, if I take a huge neighborhood, yeah, I've got lots of points of E other than one half. So, but what if I take this neighborhood? Right? The distance is, the radius is one sixth, say, less than one sixth, a twelfth, it looks like. Okay. Um, is there anybody in this, in this, in this neighborhood aside from my center point? Right? Is there anybody from here in E except for the point, except for the center itself? No, right? The nearest person is one third, right? Oh, I see what you mean. Right? E was the set of points with these guys. One, one half, one third, one fourth, blah, blah, blah. Right? And look, if I put, if I put this, here's one half, and I found this neighborhood, right? here's one third, and here's one. Right? I found, look, there's this neighborhood, and in this neighborhood, excluding the center itself, there's nobody from E in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is not a limit. I found one, you know, to be not a limit point means that you can find one neighborhood where you're clear of, of anybody from E except this, perhaps the center itself. Then if E was just the set from 0 to 1, one half would be a limit point, right? It would. Okay. Yeah. If it were the whole thing, if it were the whole interval, 0, 1, yeah. I see. Then, yeah, you know, every point here and the endpoints would, would all be limit points. Thank you so much. Okay. Anybody on the, everybody over here is saying, you know, away from them, it would not be there. Okay. Okay. Um, what's the, what are the limit points of Q in R? What are the limit points of Q in R? Was that you, Dan? Okay, turn to your neighbor and talk. <laughs> What's the answer? <laughs> okay, who wants to tell me? Who wants to tell me? Mr. Al. I was thinking the irrational numbers. The yeah. rational the numbers? Irrational. The irrational. The irrational numbers. Well, it's true that the irrational numbers, the and irrational numbers are certainly all limit points, yeah. right? Because if you take any irrational number, uh, I don't know, pi, say, right? And you take an in interval around it, well, that's going to contain, um, by the Archimedean principle, it's going to contain rational numbers, right? Okay, so certainly the irrational numbers are limit points. Are they all the limit points? Daniel? It's the rule of R. It's all of R. So the rational points also, <laughs> right? The rational points also are limit points for the same reason. So in fact, all of R, right, uh, Q prime is actually all of R. Could you explain again why the rational numbers would be limit points? The same, for the same reason. If I have a rational point here, and I take any, any interval around it, right, 1 plus R, 1 minus R, right, well, it's going to contain rational numbers by the Archimedean principle. Okay. Okay, enough, enough review. Let's go on. Um, <coughs> let's go on. So um, recall, we finished last time with the notion of the interior point. Okay. 
we finished last time with the notion of the interior point, right, of, of some set. Okay, so we said that P was an interior point. P was called interior if, if something happened, right? If you could find, um, if uh, uh, there existed a radius, if there existed a radius um, uh, R, such that the whole neighborhood NRP was contained inside of inside of E. Okay. <clears throat> so you have some point here. No. You have some set here. Right? You have some set, you have some point, and for that point, you're able to find a radius that works in the sense that that the, the, the neighborhood of that radius is contained inside of E. Right? In that case, we say that P is in the interior of E. P is an interior point of E. Um, people often use this notation to mean the interior points. Okay. With a little circle on top of it. Okay. So, uh, yeah. if I write this, it means P is, in, P is an interior point of E. Okay. This thing is called the interior. It's all the union of all interior points. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Uh, what's the interior of Q? What's the interior of Q in R? Can you find a point such that this whole thing, this whole interval, can you find a point for which there exists a neighborhood that is entirely inside of Q? No, it's impossible, right? Because you're gonna have irrational numbers inside there. Okay, next. Would the interior of Q just be Q then? No, it'd be nothing. It would be empty, empty. Couldn't we have radius, oh, because radius greater than zero. Radius greater than zero, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, yeah. <coughs> right. Similarly, right. What's the radius of this? Of this? I'm sorry. What's the interior of this set? Same thing. It's also empty. Right. For, for similar reasons. Right? You're never going to find. You're never going to find a uh, a point with a neighborhood that's contained inside entirely inside of this set. This set consists of discrete points. Right. There's no way that's going to happen. Uh, so now we go to the related definition, right? If every point in E is interior, that is to say, E is the same thing as its interior, uh, then we say E is open, right? E is an open set. So if every point is interior, they say D is open. Okay. Um, I'm going to put up a bunch more definitions, and we'll come back come back to this. Um, uh, e C. Uh, the complement of a set. The complement of E denoted E super C is defined as everybody in the space that's not in E. Okay. Everybody in the space that's not in E. All right. In the book, I think it said the complex numbers were open. How does that make sense? Uh, let, let, uh, I think I explained that in the um, in the questions, okay. but yeah, let, let me let me go on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So complement just means that you know all the things that are not in the set. For example, if I have Q in R, 
and I think and I ask for what's Q complement? Well, Q complement is going to be the you got the rational numbers, and this Q complement would be all the real numbers that are not rational. In other words, the irrational numbers. Okay. Um, if I think of R sitting inside of R, right? What's R complement? Okay. Would be the empty set, right? R complement would be the empty set. Right. If I think about R sitting inside of R sitting inside of C, then R complement would be what? Hello? R minus C. Uh, C minus R. Okay. Yeah. So it would be just like the complex plane, but excluding the real axis. Right. So it would be everything in the complex plane, but not the real axis. Right. So this would be R. This would be R. This would be R complement. Okay, so it's just everything that's not, not in there. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. Um, <coughs> uh, uh, Rudin defines this thing called perfect sets, but we're not really going to care about them, so let's ignore that. Um, uh, bounded set, so... Um, okay, so we say <coughs> E is bounded if... So here's the funny definition. If um, there exists a point uh, x in your space, and there exists some radius, and uh, E is contained inside the neighborhood of that radius around that point. Pretty, uh, pretty simple idea, right? A set is bounded just means that you can find some point and you can find some radius and the set lives inside the, the neighborhood of that radius around that point, okay? So there's some finite, there's some finite neighborhood that your set lives inside, okay? That's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, okay. Uh, the last definition, if um, every point in X is a limit point of E, or in E itself, then we say E is dense. To use the notation we put out earlier, earlier, if x is um, equal to e union its limit points, right? If everything in x is either in e or is a limit point of e, then we say that then x is e is dense in x. Yeah. So we had one earlier, actually. Remember, we saw that the limit points of Q were actually all of R, mm -hmm. right? And so what's that saying? That the whole space that R is actually contained in, actually contained in the union of Q and its limit points, right? So Q is dense in R, okay. and this is this is related to what we were talking earlier about density, right? That Q was dense in R. Everything is either in, in the set or is a limit point of that set. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, let me have you do an exercise, which is that I'd like you to take a minute or two and show that every neighborhood, so you have some metric space, a metric space. Show that every neighborhood uh, is open. <coughs> every neighborhood is an open set. Okay, just to solidify some definitions. 
and get you used to get you used to thinking about metrics. Talk to somebody nearby. Talk to somebody nearby. So you know, this is not a real picture because this is a picture from R2, right? And we're not in R2, we're in some arbitrary metric space, but let's pretend that we're in R2. Okay, so there's some center point P, right? There's some radius R, right? There's, we have, we're looking at some neighborhood and we wanna show that this neighborhood is open, right? We wanna show that every point here Every point inside the set uh, has a neighborhood that's contained inside that's contained inside this this neighborhood, right? Okay. So you choose some point Q inside here, and how do you show that? You know, what? How do you how do you uh, what radius should you choose? What radius should you choose for for Q? Then R. R minus Q. Q. R minus. Uh, the R minus the distance from from P to Q. Say right. So. Say okay, well, let's 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 yeah. right. So let's call this thing. Uh, let's call uh, R minus. Let H denote the distance. Um, sorry, R minus the distance from P to Q. Okay. okay. So that is the distance to the to the to the boundary, right? And that you know hopefully should should be the right answer, right? Why does that? Um, um, <coughs> Uh, why does that set lie inside? So what you'd have to show is that any point inside that set um, is smaller than distance r from p, right? And what's the key thing that you're going to use? The the triangle inequality, right? So you'd say, well, look, the distance from from x to p is smaller than the distance from x to q plus the distance from q to p. Well, that's smaller than r. Uh, smaller than uh, h plus plus this, in other words, smaller than r. 
Okay. So this gives you your intuition, and then you you uh, you know for the most part you know, your intuition in R uh, in R two is gonna is gonna hold in 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 your arbitrary metric space. Okay. Okay. So let's let's do the proof. Okay. So um, <coughs> let uh, so let P be some neighborhood and RP in your space. Okay. Um, pick any pick any Q in E. <coughs> uh, then the distance from P to Q is some number R minus H. Right? For some H for some positive H. <coughs> right? Because the distance from p the distance from p to q is smaller than r, right? So it's some number r minus h for some positive h. Okay. okay. Uh, then uh, I claim that the distance of I'm sorry that. The neighborhood of radius H around Q is contained in E. Right. Mm -hmm. If I take the neighborhood of radius H around Q, that's going to be contained in E, uh, since let me write it out properly here. Since if we take any point X in that neighborhood. Um, the distance from x to the distance from x to p is uh, less than or equal to the distance from um, x to q plus the distance from q to q to p. Right by the triangle inequality. Right? But the distance from, from x to q is less than h, and the distance from q to p is less than, uh, uh, the distance from q to p equals r minus h, right? And so we get r. example of the proof using you know uh, using the def this definition this is basically to clarify what open means and to um, get you used to thinking about metrics arbitrary metrics okay okay is that all is that all right anybody have questions okay let's go on So uh, next thing, um, so again, you've got a metric space, and you've got some subset in the metric space. Um, the claim is that if, uh, if P is a limit point of E, then uh, every neighborhood, every neighborhood of uh, P contains infinitely many points of E. So this is just to, to codify our intuition about what limit points are. Remember, what we the way you think about limit point is that it's something that 
for every neighborhood, there's some point of there's some point of e in it, right? There's some other point of e in it, right? And so you can think of it as, as, as something that's that's infinitely close to e, right? That that the point itself, you know, if you think about its distance to e, not including itself, you know, maybe it's an e, um, but you think about how the, the the closest next point of e is infinitely close. Okay. Okay. And so this is this is basically you know codifying that um, that idea. Okay. So um, there are a couple ways you could prove it. One is is just what we just said. Right? You think well, look here is p. Here is p. And so take take some neighborhood. Right. Take some neighborhood. I know that there's somebody in there from e. Call it e1. Okay. Now I take another neighborhood where the radius is the distance to E1. Okay. I know that there's somebody from, from E in there, and it's not E1, because E1's not, not in that neighborhood. So there must be some E2 in there, right? Keep on going, <laughs> right? Keep on going, and you see that there's a, you can always get an infinite sequence of points, um, you know, going inwards to, going inwards to P. Okay, so that's, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to say, well, suppose there's finitely many points. You could do it by contradiction. So suppose there are finitely many points, right? Suppose you can find some neighborhood, and there's only finitely many, many points of E in there. Well then, what's wrong with that? If there's, suppose there's only one, you know, let's exaggerate. Suppose there's only one point of E in there. I'm saying that this is a limit point. I found this neighborhood, there's only one point of E in here. What am I going to do? to show the contradiction, shrinking, right? So I take a smaller neighborhood, and there's nobody from E in there, contradiction. Okay, so you do exactly the same thing. If there's finitely many points, just take the smallest distance, right? Take the minimum of the distances and say, well, inside that smallest radii, there's nobody. Inside that smallest radius, there's nobody, contradiction. Okay, so, um, so let me write out the second one. Um, I think the first one is in your notes. I, I wrote it out in your notes. So, by contradiction, suppose uh, there exists a neighborhood of P such that that contains only finitely many elements E1 through EN of E. Let R, uh, sorry, let R, R1 be the minimum of the distances, right? The minimum of the distance of P to EI as I ranges from 1 to N. So take the smallest distance, right? Take the smallest distance, then N R1 P intersects intersect E um, is, I'm sorry, the punctured neighborhood is empty. Contradiction. Right? In that case, P is not a limit point. Decided to just charge forward. There's a lot, a lot we should get through. Um, and anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a lot we should get through. Okay. Any, but any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's go on. So, um, so here is a theorem that that uh, is pretty useful. A, uh, e is open if and only if uh, E complement is closed. Okay. And some, 
But some textbooks will define uh, closed in this manner. Okay, some texts will, will define closed in this manner. Rudin defines it rather as saying that closed means that you contain all your limit points, right? Right. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, um, okay. Should I let you think about it? Let's, let's, uh, which direction do you like? Do you want to prove the forwards direction or the backwards direction? They're both about the same, I think, in terms of difficulty. So, let's prove the forwards. I'll give you one minute to think about the forwards direction. Why, why <coughs> ought to be true? Right? If D is open, then the complement ought to be closed. In other words, the complement has to contain all its limit points, right? So, we want to show D open implies the complement contains all its limit points, right? The complement contains all its limit points, right? So you say, okay, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> okay. um, you say, well, suppose that P is a limit point, a limit point of E complement. Okay. Suppose that P is a limit point of E complement. Right. Well, that would mean, um, <coughs> right, if you want to use sort of an awful notation, it would be E complement, that P lies in uh, E complement prime. Okay. Um, if, it's a comp if, if it's a limit point of E complement, that means that in every punctured neighborhood, then there's some element of E complement, mm -hmm. right? So that means that for any, for every punctured neighborhood, of P, uh, we have, let me write like this, for every radius, the punctured neighborhood of P intersect E complement is non-empty, right? There's somebody from E complement, here is P, no matter what radius I choose, there's somebody from E complement, so not any, right? There's somebody in there who's not any, right? No matter I choose, there's somebody who's in there who's not any. So um, what does that tell you about, could P be in E? Could P be in E? No. Everybody says no. Why not? Uh, because since E is open. Yes. Then, yeah, yes. Because E is open, right? E is open, so it should be that whenever you have P, you can find some neighborhood where everybody is in E, right? Being open means that that you can find some neighborhood where everybody, some neighborhood of P where everybody in there is in E. But we've just shown that no matter what neighborhood you take, you take, there's somebody who from not E. Right? Right? We said, well, this guy was a limit point of E complement, right? So every punctured neighborhood contains somebody not in E. Right? Well in that case, we cannot find a neighborhood that lies entirely inside of E, as we would have to for E to be open. Okay, right. So P is not P is not in E, right? Because it's not interior to E. Right? P is not P is not in the interior of E, but uh, uh, right? P is not in the interior of E. Okay, so what does that tell you? Any limit point of E complement is in E complement, right? So any, so P is in E complement, right? And so what you've shown is that any limit point of E complement is in E comp is in E complement. In other words, E complement is closed, right? E complement E complement contains all its limit points. Going backwards, you say, say that E complement contains all its limit points. So 
suppose E complement contains all its limit points, and we want to show that um, every point in E is interior to E. You see that these ideas are pretty closely related. We say, well, look, um, P is not a limit point of E complement. Right? P is not a limit point of E complement, right? Because, right, you uh, E complement contains all its limit points, right? So, P being E means that it's not a limit point, not a limit point of E complement. <laughs> is everyone okay? Are people okay or am I just charged on without, without uh, maybe I should have charged on too quickly? I'm going to start over. <laughs> okay. Okay. So suppose we're trying to show that if E complement is closed, then E is open. Okay. In other words, if E complement contains all its limit points, right, so we want to show E complement is on the place, then E is open. Okay. So pick a point in E. Okay. Pick a point in E. We want to show that that guy's interior. Okay? Pick a point in E. Okay. It's not P is not P is not a limit point of C complement. Right? P is not a limit point of C complement because E complement contains all its limit points. Right. <coughs> well, if it's a not, so not a limit point of E complement, right? Well, what does that mean? This is just de definition chasing, right? That means that there's some punctured neighborhood that doesn't intersect E complement, right? So there exists some radius such that the punctured neighborhood around P uh, intersect E complement is empty. Right? There's a neighborhood that doesn't intersect E complement. Right? There's a punctured neighborhood that doesn't intersect E complement. But we also know the center doesn't intersect E complement either, right? Because the center is in E, mm -hmm. not in E complement. So we can fix this. In fact, and R, the neighborhood, not just the function neighborhood. Right? The neighborhood uh, does not intersect E complement. But that means that the neighborhood is contained in E. Right? That means that the neighborhood is contained in E. And so that point was interior. Right? And so E is open. Okay. So this is a pretty useful uh, characterization of open and closedness, right? Um, right? That they are the complement of an open set is a closed set and vice, and vice versa. Okay. Um, those of you who have been in my class before know that I, I, there's this funny movie that I recommend on YouTube about um, uh, Hitler learning topology. Um, uh, I, it's, uh, maybe, I should, maybe I shouldn't describe it, but um, just look, go on YouTube and look up Hitler learns topology. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so they've taken some old, uh, they've taken some movie uh, about World War II, and I think it's a point where, where Hitler is, is very, you know, his, his armies are, are very badly pressed, right? Things are going bad, and he calls all of his top people in, and he starts berating them. He's like, he's, he's, he's scolding them. But somebody has, you know, written subtitles underneath it. And so to make it seem like he's talking to a bunch of, he's been trying to learn topology, and yet the definitions are so confusing. So he's, he's furious at these topologists. He's like, you know, you know, you are the top topologists in the land. You know, why do you come up with such crazy definitions? What is an accumulation point? What is a limit point? 
<laughs> no, I'm sorry, no. And he says, like, you know, with you know, with these definitions, it's not even clear to me that a set could be open and closed at the same time. And then somebody's like, <laughs> this might be our there, there are such sets. <laughs> They're called clothing. <laughs> and we just close up. <laughs> that is such <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and then everybody's shaking, right? Because they, they, they're going to be executed or something. <laughs> so, anyway, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have three minutes. Um, let me just. Uh, Actually, we do have three minutes. Okay. So here's a theorem about uh, the interaction of, of unions, intersections, openness, and closeness. Okay. This is a pretty straightforward theorem. Um, okay. So. <clears throat> What it says is the following, is that if you have a collection of open sets, if you have any collection of open sets, then the union is going to be open. Sorry, the intersection, the intersection is open. Okay. It could be a finite, finite intersection, finite collection. It could be an infinite collection. It could be an uncountably infinite kind of collection. And yet, you're going to end up with an open set. Okay. Um, what am I doing? The union. <laughs> I'm crazy. The union is open. Okay. Uh, and similarly, if you have a collection of closed sets, then the intersection is going to be closed. OK. <clears throat> yeah, what I said earlier is not true. Right? If you have an infinite, infinite intersection of open sets, the intersection may well be closed. OK. It's true, however, if you have a finite collection, right? if you have um, G1, Bgn, a finite collection of open sets, then the intersection of that finite collection is open, is still open. Okay. And if you have a finite collection of closed sets, then their finite union is, is closed. It's still closed. OK. So we don't have time to, to give the proof, but the proof of this, we'll, we'll do it at the beginning. Next time, the proof of this relies on something called the Morgan's Laws. Why are people groaning? Because you hate the Morgan's Laws? Oh, interesting thing to hate. Um, <laughs> Okay, so De Morgan's laws. So we'll start off with that next time. Okay.